morning Saturday the 11th of April just in case you're on YouTube looking for the the one you're looking for if you want Saturday the 11th morning snack you found it if not scroll back who's in well doorman first in just adjusting the the hair hair and makeup didn't do a very good job this morning <clears throat> Northumberland is in who's next I reckon it might be Wales or it might be Scotland it's the who's in next game Maybe it's just me and you, Bob. If you have stumbled on this, is the first one and wondering um, what on earth I'm talking about. This is the, the four minute warning, uh, counting down to the first morning snack today. It's the, the preamble, the pre-broadcast broadcast. I was right, it was uh, Scotland in X by a nose, quickly followed by Wales. <clears throat> Do tell us where you are, so I can uh, play the geography game in my head and lose. Come on everyone, you know it makes sense, I know you're out there. We were chatting on the my message this morning, people responding, and they're very glad that I can't see you. Hmm, I'm sure. Hello Penzance and Killin. Look at that, from, from Killin to Penzance and a bit of Northumberland in between and some whales on the side. See, let's get me geography right. I think this is our three minute countdown and then we'll uh, continue with the movement snack. More whales in. Very sunny in Wisbeach. Thank you Sheila for the weather report there. Any other weather? A little bit more overcast here and haven't. We haven't much sun in haven't, but I still have this ghostly glow. Can you see? Bristol. Bristol is in. I think I've already revealed that I have sold ice creams at the Bristol Hippodrome. Mm. That's my mum talking to Chris. Yeah, talk amongst yourselves, don't mind me. Uh, I reckon it's a, a less than a two minute countdown and then we're going to get going. And uh, a couple of, two or three days ago, uh, I tasked the group to come up with some limericks, really just to help me fill this blank space, random preamble. Um, so I'm gonna read out a couple, of, a couple more of those limericks Rick, hello, Somerton is in, Vivian is in, sunny London. Okay, let's kick off with a couple of limericks just to get the, uh, get us in the mood. Uh, this one is, for, oh, and I'm going to really apologise because I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this right, so do put me right. I think it's a dial, Bryce, a dial, I think, I don't know. Okay, here it is, here's the one from a dial. It starts out with a conversation and moves on to circulation. X gets us to move and get into the groove, mobility, but not exhaustion. It's a good one. Lots of good points in there. Conversation, circulation, moving. Not too sure about the grooving. It's not something I do very well, but it is about mobility and not exhaustion. This one, I don't know who wrote this one. Some random person gate crashing our group. Hello, I'm Bex Townley from Later Life Training. Opportunities to move is what we are aiming. 
You've responded indeed with remarkable ease. Watch out world when we are released from this containment. Boom, boom. Shall we move on? Here we go. Good morning, my name is Bex Townley and it is Saturday the 11th of April. I've added the date stamp so you know what you're finding on YouTube later. We've done 58 movement snacks to date, plus two extras. Those extras were specific uh, seated option movement snacks. And if you've been, us, been with us from the outset or you've picked up us on various weeks in between, we're here in the business of accumulating movement minutes. Every movement counts and these minutes serve to add to any other activities that you're already doing. And if we do 10 minutes per day, three times a day, we're accumulating three and a half hours per week of extra movement minutes. So our morning routine is a little bit of circ boost and mobility, and then we get a flavor of some strength to come in the lunchtime session. So pick your position, please, seated or stand. I had a, a request to wear white socks, so we'll give that a go. So I've got the white socks on today, special, but I had to borrow them from mum. So here's your uh, options. In standing, please, as always. Uh, steady and stable support, that's appropriate for your height. If you know what's coming, do make a start. Starting to, to walk or march on the spot, and then consider lifting up open a little bit more to lengthen through the posture. Keep using support if you need, and we're trying to optimize the movement in the ankles, feet and toes. For this morning session, I purposefully don't wear shoes. That's not to say I'm saying definitely don't wear shoes. So it depends on your floor surface. It depends uh, generally what you've been uh, advised or recommended. I just want you to see my feet moving and how they move. In standing, as and when you feel you're comfortable to, we can bring in one arm. If you want to keep using the support, face the support. So you can alternate the arms as and when you feel comfortable, we can bring to it. It's a steady, steady pace, march or walk. Keep going with that standing group, please. In seated, if this is your start position, hip walk forward, lift and shift the hips. This will make it easier to stand and also easier to move and posture muscles are working. We two are going to start down at the feet and the march is generated from the ankles, feet and toes if we can. If you find that you're still a little bit flat-footed, that's okay for now. We're looking to improve and optimize ankles, feet, and toes. So just take your time to try to get the feet to generate this march. If feet are not an option for you today, for whatever reason, we can start in the top half with a steady uh, single arm march, replace, alternate, and when you are ready, bring those together. Now this is all on a lifted, active posture. If at any time in sit or stand you feel that you're getting tired in the middle and you're starting to sag, take a pause completely, have a little pit stop, and then set up the position again and commence. Hands coming together might help with coordination, it might help you guide the elbow back a little bit more, especially if you're in a chair, an armchair with arms. So continue with this please. So this initial minute or minute and a bit is our circulation booster and it just serves to do that to boost the circulation give an injection into the circulatory system to get us ready for this movement snack and then pause stand tall take up support if you need sit tall and after that that little circ boost will have a perhaps a deeper breath not breathless not sweating not exhausted it's literally just a little feeling of ah I'm ready to go. Now we're going to work through our mobilising, our mobility movements from top to bottom, all designed to improve activities of daily living. Let's start with shoulders. If you know what's coming, please continue. Hands on support if you need, sitting tall if that's your position and it's the shoulder roll up, back and down. Head stay still on this, take your time. And remember on this one, I'm gonna just kind of come closer so you can see. Just feel your way around this movement. So it's, it's a movement that's comfortable for you. Just take a pause after each one so that each one is 
is as best it can be for you. Doesn't matter how small that may feel, you might feel a little bit lopsided and we only have one, one side that's moving more. Just think about moving both, lift and open and feel your way around that movement. So anything that involves upper body, arms, grasp is gonna involve the shoulders. Having mobilized the, the kind of shoulders and the upper back, let's now go up to the neck area here. So in sit or stand, lengthen through the posture, lift and open so we're active from the center, and then a slow turn to the center and pause. So you're pausing in the middle. The pause is the only stop position. Mobility moves into position and moves back out. It keeps on moving. Move to the position and back out. If you're in standing, any turning of the head may challenge your balance to a lesser or greater degree. So do take up some support on this one. I don't want to challenge your balance this morning. We're after quality, quality movement and mobility. On these mobility movements, one or two if you're starting, three, five max, and then stop. Another neck movement, have a look at this one. So shoulders are level, my fingers just act as a, just as a guide and a reference point. And we just squeeze, just lightly press the head backwards. So it's the, it's the attractive double chin one. And as I've mentioned before, in daily life, when we're doing tasks, we can become very flexed. Our head can come forward for, for many reasons. This one just serves to help us improve the mobility over time to literally hold the head in a better position to help with balance, posture and everyday life. So with the shoulders and those two neck movements, we've, we've mobilised this, this triangle here that's responsible for pretty much all daily tasks. We need all of those movements throughout our days. Have an extra little, uh, little march on the spot, a little bit more ankle burst, transferring that weight with confidence. Same in seated, just a little bit more circ boost, just to promote that circulation, because we've all been asleep. And then take a little pause. Let's work our way down now to the, the trunk area, the center of all of our activities of daily living closely followed by the brain, first, other way around. Uh, we're gonna start with some turning. Have a look, join in when you see it. In seated, remember your backside is the anchor alongside your feet. So now we've got two, two points of reference to really get right. So buttocks stay on the floor, and we're gonna take a slow turn and come back. Remember the pause is in the middle. Turn and come back. And you can take the hands round with you if you want to, and come back, keep your buttocks in the chair. Keep going on that in seated, in stand. Wider stance, this will help with balance, and you may want to turn so that you have both hands on the support. This enables you to use that support for confidence as you take the turn. Change hands. And can you see that I've got this, this really strong, steady, stable stance. Imagine my support is here. And as I turn, I come straight back. I'm not, I'm not going with pace. I'm not, I'm not pushing myself round. It's really easing my way, finding that, that motion there that's comfortable for me. And these turning movements are implicit in everyday life. Um, from mobilising in and out of bed, off of the floor, out of the bath, in and out of cars, in and out of chairs, reaching, grabbing, grasping. We need this, this functional turn. Have a little pit stop if you need. And then let's move on to the, the side bend. I'm going to show you this one in standing first. Again, as always, slightly wider on the feet. This will help you feel more confident. Hands on, don't want to challenge balance at this point, and uh, keep the weight even across both feet. We're going to take a sideways bend, come up to the center. It keeps moving, that's quite important. Down to the side and come up again. So it only stops in the middle. Squeeze down, bend, and come back. And if you want to in stand, if you feel confident, stand taller, more upright, you can either support the arms here 
or you can start to add a functional reach out to the side perhaps. Take your time. Can you see I'm fairly fixed here, really anchored to the floor and it's the same in seated also. If you see some of these movements and you want to move between stand and sit, please, please do so. When you do come to sit, feel for the chair and optimise that sit as well with control. So wider feet back on the side bends. It's the side bend here and comes back. You might want to support the arms, especially if you're in a chair that has big arms on the, on the side. So you might want to get the arms out of the way for that one. Or you might want to add a functional reach, entirely up to you. Take a pit stop. So as far as the trunk is concerned, we've taken the turn, we've taken the bend, now we're going to work more on some extension. And as I've said, in daily life we tend to be very flexed. So for this reason we want to stand more upright. So I'll show you the standing option first. Hands on support for this one. Keep the weight even across the feet. From your usual posture position, stand taller and then add an extra extend and return and release. It keeps moving. You may want to add a reference point here. Sometimes it's more comfortable for, for the shoulder if we put the back of the hands. This can guide, extend and come out. Can you, can you, can you feel how these move slowly in and out of positions? Slowly in and slowly out to a point that's comfortable for you. In seated, if you prefer to do this one, Hands to thighs offers a, also a nice reference point. So from your usual posture position, you come up through to taller sitting and then add an extra squeeze at the top and come down. Keep the head and the gaze forward. Keep the head and the gaze forward. This is important. So I want to keep looking forwards. My gaze remains forwards. I don't want it to go up. Have a little release. Have a... A little bit of that and a little bit of this and we're down on ankles. Seated options for ankles, if you know what's coming in stand, continue with that, do make a start. We've got two options in the chair. All the way back for a little bit more support here, just bring the leg off. Um, I was uh, requested to try white socks today, so maybe you can see this a bit better. And we're after this really specific movement from the ankle. This is how we walk. So for this reason, we're after this, this press down and this squeeze back rather than just a random wiggle. Same on the other leg, three, five of these and really focus on the range. As the toes come back towards you, you're gonna to start to feel some tension on the back of the leg, this is usual. Try and involve the toes in this as well. That's why I leave my socks on today. Give them an extra squeeze and splay throughout that. The other options in sit, is the same as the standing, which is this one. And this one brings in the hip and the knee as well. So let me show you this in stand. And remember, now I've got uh, all of my body weight on one leg, so I need lots of support, and I've got lots of things benefiting me here. So I've got some strength going on in this leg. I'm bringing in the, uh, the hip and the knee as well. Don't forget to change sides. And when we change sides, don't just cheat and do the inside leg. Just use that as an opportunity to step through 180 degrees using the support. Stepping round, stepping round is a mobility skill in itself. And there's the other leg. If in stand you're confident and happy to progress that, we've been taking that ankle mobility and bringing it into a more functional step. So. If, having done some of those, you then want to take this action here, you can see directly how that mobility move we've just done. There's, there's the toes up, there's the heel strike, and here's the heel raise here. So that's the, that mobility applied to stride. Can you see? And to a certain degree, we can do that in seated also. Not completely replicated, but we can focus on the stride here. Toes off and replace. Heel through to toe. Now in seated as well, I have this weight shift. Can you see? We talked yesterday about the position of the pelvis. I'll do that again this afternoon, but it's a lift 
and a shift and you need to find your buttocks on this as well as that heel goes down squeeze your buttocks I think that's it you know what I'm gonna say crowbar in some sit to stands and some heel raises sit to stand or jockey lift when you can heel raise into your day when you can and I will be here at 12 o'clock <clears throat> for a more strength activity focus so you're ready to go forth into your day take that mobility use it to enjoy your day and I'll see you back here at 12 o'clock that's 10 minutes in the movement bag so that's the first 10 of 30 today go accumulate accumulate your minutes see you back at 12